Today we are going to talk about what gears have to do with solving problems. But before we get to that, we're going to solve a couple of problems ourselves. So we have five gears here. Now if we turn the first gear clockwise, what is going to happen to the last gear? in the row. If the answer isn't immediately obvious to you, pause the video and give this problem just a quick shot because I am going to spoil the answer. Okay, you back? You with me? So there are basically three ways to solve this problem. The first way is to use our imagination. So we have to think about, okay, the first gear is going to turn this way, the next gear is going to turn that way, the next gear is going to turn that way. The second way is to use what's called a local rule and I'm going to talk uh, in a minute more what I mean by that. And the third way is to come up with a general rule, like a general rule that's going to be applied to all the problems and we're going to get to that one too. But let's start with our imagination. Of course if you had the actual gears you could just you know test this out and you don't need to use any of these strategies. Um, but these are just images on a screen. We're just imagining what might happen to the gears. So if you've never ever seen one of these problems before, the strategy that you're most likely going to use is, a, is the first strategy, the imagination strategy. So what happens when we do this is we think about how the first gear is going to turn. Now I said it was going to turn clockwise, so let's keep with that basic assumption. So let's suppose the first gear turns clockwise. Okay, so it turns clockwise. Now we have to think about, okay, if the first gear turns clockwise, what's the next gear going to do? The next gear is going to turn um, counterclockwise, I guess, if I'm thinking about where the gears touch. Okay, now that gear is turning counterclockwise, so what's the next gear going to do? So I've done two gears, now I'm on gear three, counterclockwise. Um, the next gear thinks it's going to turn clockwise. And you you continue to use your imagination like this until you get to the end where you you figure out what the answer is. But you might notice something interesting as you're doing this, and that is that every gear turns the opposite way as the gear before it. So this is what I referred to earlier as a local rule. So this is just about two gears touching each other. You know the next gear in line is going to be different than the previous gear. So using this strategy, we can solve the five gear problem um, like so. You know, the first gear turns clockwise, so the second gear turns counterclockwise, third gear is clockwise, fourth gear is counter, uh, fifth gear is clockwise. With this rule, you can stop imagining things. If you come across another problem, say you have six gears now. So now you have six gears and you can just think, well, the first one's clockwise, the second one is counter, third one is clockwise, fourth one is counter, fifth one is clockwise, sixth one is counterclockwise. So the answer would be counterclockwise. But if you are paying attention here, you might notice something else. And that is that all of the odd number gears turn the same way and all of the even number gears turn the same way as well. So if the first gear turns clockwise, then all of the even gears, that's two, four, six, etc., they are going to turn counterclockwise. And all of the odd gears, that's like the first gear, the third gear, the fifth gear, they are going to turn clockwise. This is, is what I referred to earlier as the general rule. So if you know this rule, this rule is very, very powerful because you can solve any kind of gear problem no matter how long. So if there is a million gears and the first one turns clockwise, then the millionth gear is going to turn counterclockwise, right? And the millionth and first gear is going to turn clockwise. Now this involves what's called parity, which is often used to solve math problems and other kind of science problems, um, but I'm not going to get into that here. So we have our three strategies now to solve our gears in a row problem, and once we get to that general rule, um, you know, we can just apply that general rule and find the answer instantly. But suppose that we confronted a different kind of gear problem. So the gears are arranged in a circle like this. Now the question is, if the first gear, if this gear at the top turns clockwise, what's going to happen to the other gears? Uh, you might be able to figure this out with a little bit of thought by thinking about how the uh, row of gears worked. But for most people, the answer doesn't come instantly, even if they've practiced on these row problems. So now if they work on the gears in a circle problems, they have to kind of take a step back and think again. And what they do, what they, people tend to do, is they tend to use their imagination. 
again. So they have to think, okay, well, we've got, we've got five gears in a circle. Well, that first gear is going to turn clockwise. So the next one's going to turn counterclockwise. And then the third one's turn clockwise. And we're kind of using the same strategy that we used before, only we're really interested in imagining what that interaction is between the last gear and the first gear in the circle, because that's going to determine whether all the gears turn or whether none of the gears turn. Once you start imagining things again, you can develop a local rule again, and you can pretty quickly develop a general rule if you want. There are three important lessons here. Lesson one is most of the time when we talk about problem solving, what we're talking about is solving a class of problems. Every problem has some elements that it shares with other problems and some elements that are a little bit different. And we have this suite of tools that we use to tackle these kinds of problems. Usually there's not a single rule like there is for these gear problems, but the more problems you solve, the more that you start to abstract the process, right? We started with our imagination and then we got more and more abstract until we got to a general rule. This brings me to my second lesson here, which is the strategy for solving problems changes over time. So as we solve more problems from this class of problems that we have, our strategies start changing. That means that you can't tell really uh, what a person knows necessarily just from whether they solve the problem or not. So if you saw your friend solve one of these gear problems, you don't know if they used their imagination, if they uh, used kind of a local rule, or they used uh, the general rule that we talked about, or maybe something that we haven't even thought of yet. And finally, lesson three here, the tendency is to use our imagination when we don't have any other resources to draw on, when we don't have any kind of rule or algorithm to apply. Now, all three of these strategies have their benefits, right? Our imaginations can be applied to really any kind of problem, and it's this kind of general purpose tool, even if it, it is a little slow, it helps us understand the situation more deeply. The general, <laughs> the general rule that we came up with is also extremely powerful, but in a different way, because it lets us solve kind of an arbitrary number of these problems without really trying so hard. I mean, we can just program a computer to solve this now and we don't have to use our imaginations. Um, but the drawback of that general rule is that it doesn't apply to every single problem that we can think of. It only applies to this specific class of problems. Finally, the local rule is serving a role here too because the local rule helps us bridge from kind of using our imagination to coming up with a more general, more efficient rule. It's the local rule that takes us from thinking about just the situation to coming up with something that's that's abstract and powerful. Now, who wants to play with gears? If you learned something from this video, go down into the comments and write what you learned, and that will help that little nugget stay there a little bit better. I would really appreciate it if you click that like button, which will help other people find the video as well. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>